Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. I'd like to let new subscribers know about ways that you can catch up on everything that you have missed in the intervening years. The Master's Voice has helpful playlists on the dashboard where you can listen to the prophecies grouped by theme. And the benefit of listening to prophecies grouped by theme is that once you get into a theme and you start going through all the messages, all the information that the Lord has been bringing forth over the last few years from the oldest to the newest, it has the benefit of catching you up very quickly. It also will give you an in-depth spiritual understanding of what that theme is. And you might find that there is quite a lot to learn on different topics that you thought you understood, such as what sin is how it affects people, how it affects families, how it affects nations, and what is the, Lord esti the Lord's estimation of sin. So there is the Sin series, there is the America series, there is the Russia and the China series, which is the most important playlist on the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. There is also the Repentance playlist. There is a playlist exclusively to bring you to the understanding of what Nephilim are, the Nephilim, the fallen angels, what these creatures are and what God has to say about them in relation to the end times. There's also an aliens playlist and what the Lord has to say about these creatures. Most people would think that these supernatural aspects have nothing to do with the Christian faith, but far from it, these things are actually part and parcel of the faith. And these prophecies are first and foremost to the church of Jesus Christ. So if you're listening and you're thinking these things are not part of the Christian faith, they are very much emphatically part of what our king jesus christ is telling us we will face in the intervening years in the times that are still to come today i will attempt to look at two prophecies but first of all i'm starting off with this one and it is talking about china this prophecy is multifaceted and it's all the way from 2021 the very beginning of the year february 15 2021 it's talking about China. It's talking about the resurgence and re-emergence of disease. And it's also looking at an aspect that will be quite dangerous in the future beast system. So let us begin. The title of this prophecy is The Fairest of Them All, February 15, 2021. And I had all these dreams in one night. So this was one of those situations where the Lord was giving me multiple dreams, different dreams following after, one after the other in one night. And they are a revolving look at things that the Lord says are coming to this world in the future. And sometimes when I had dreams, um, a few occasions here on the Master's Voice, when I've had dreams that seem to be unrelated, so different dreams dealing with different things. The prophetic eye of the Lord looking at one matter and then looking at another matter and another matter, and they may not necessarily be connected. Sometimes I have made the video separately, attempting to keep the matters um, different from one another, but I haven't done that in a couple of years. And the reason for that is because if the Lord can look at multiple issues in one night, then we can also listen and understand how divergent God's eye is, how he can look at one thing and one thing and one thing, and it can all happen at a single moment of time in a single night, different dreams. And so in the first dream, I dreamt of all the nations and they were at a very glitzy and glamorous, exclusive beauty pageant. I saw all countries of the world gathered together for a beauty pageant. And the task before the contestants were that each each woman, the nations were presented as ladies. They were presented as women. Each woman had to display the best of her glory and her splendor before the others in competition. That's what a beauty pageant is. It's, it's a competition, a race of sorts to find out who is most skillful, who is most eloquent, who is most beautiful. So as they lined up to participate, each nation turned into a very beautiful woman displayed before me. Each one was talented in her own right, but very quickly it became obvious that one contestant, one nation, one woman that nobody could beat or compete with was China. She was dazzling in this dream. The nation of China presented as a woman was stunning, dazzling. 
Her beauty filled the room and it became very clear that there was no need to have the competition anymore once these nations turned into women. It was extremely glaring, obvious, who was the fairest of them all. And the Lord God was the judge. So he was the judge of this beauty competition. And he crowned China as the leader, the winner, the front runner. And she went up before him and bowed her head and she accepted her crown and her scepter. So whenever a woman wins a beauty pageant, there's always this ruling stick or rod that they give them like ancient queens. And they also give them a crown. And God crowned China as the leader, the clear front one runner, the winner of this beauty pageant. And she bowed before him and he put on her head a crown and gave her a scepter. And that was the end of the first dream. And here is the prophecy that the Lord gave for this dream. China will be the world leader in days to come. She will enter supremacy and there will be no holding back her glory. Thus says the Lord, the reward for hard work is ascendancy, prominence, and glory. She will be the foremost nation among the nations and will take her place as a world leader who influences everybody else. All the style, culture, and compelling political rhetoric will come from her, not America. She will be the leader in technology, and nobody will be able to compete with her production rates, her prices, her market share, business savvy, or anything else. Diplomats from China will be feted. That means to be greatly celebrated and coveted as the kind of person that you want to have as your friend, the kind of person that everybody says, oh, I wish I was friends with that person, or I wish I could get that person to come to my dinner party. And the Lord says that at the same time that China will be highly sought after as an international partner or as a friend and ally, America will be forgotten and become irrelevant as we enter the end times. The United States will fade from prominence even as the glory and the beauty of China fills the room. These are the words of the Lord. And so this is the explanation that the Lord gave for a dream where nations are being presented as women. And in a beauty pageant, usually it's supposed to be a process whereby we're looking at different uh, different competitors. We're looking at the different women and we're waiting for each woman to display her dance outfit and to display her talent and to display her, her evening gown. And we're waiting to see different aspects of the woman unfold. We're watching the process as the judges are also watching the process. And then the judges will make a decision. But the Lord showed here in the stream that once the nations were actually arrayed, China outstripped them all. And China was the obvious winner. And God himself is the one who gave her the crown and the rulership position. And so you might remember that in past prophecies, the Lord has said that the nation that will sit at the very apex of everything that is going to come, the nation that is going to be the premier strategist, the nation that is going to be basically the world leader, the nation that's going to set the tone is the nation of Russia. And indeed the Lord has said that where you see America now, Russia is going to replace her. But in terms of ubiquitousness, meaning just being everywhere, in terms of the spread, in terms of the power outlay, in terms of being able to have a more vast reach, in terms of influence and things like that, the Lord is saying that China is going to be the world leader. And what God has revealed in many past prophecies that you can find on the Russia and China playlist is that when these two nations come together, that is going to spell the death knell for the United States. So these two nations, if you've heard any of the Russia and China prophecies are not the kind of nations that are going to easily play their hand. I've been discussing these things since 2019 in written form on the blog. So no one should have the idea that these are things that are coming from watching news or anything like that. Because since 2015, I have known since 2014, when God was first showing me dreams without giving me any spoken explanation, showing me dreams that Russia will come to the United States and that Russia will be here physically 
This is not going to be some long distance nuke war only. N Russia is going to come and occupy the United States. The United States is going to be an occupied nation. Russia is going to lock up America's borders and Russia is even going to chase um, people who rise up in resistance warfare, people who rise up, you know, patriot people and just people who are totally against occupation even perhaps members of the armed forces who may get together and try to form loose bands at that time because once the invasion comes the nation is not going to be operating as in a properly operating nation russia is going to lock up the american borders russia is going to attack russia and china are going to attack the united states on both sides at the same time and then lock up the country and people who were trying to flee to canada Russia went into Canada and got them back. So I have discussed all these things in old prophecies. All you have to do is go to the Master's Voice Prophecy blog, www.the-masters-voice.com, and you can read all that. Just type Russia at the bottom of the blog in the search box, and about 25 Russia and China prophecies will come up for you to read. But what God is saying here is the spotlight is focusing on China in this prophecy. And God is saying in terms of ascendancy, which I covered even with Russia, ascendancy means the process of rising. So for many years now, U.S. media will cover China and always say, well, it's undoubtable that China is rising. It's undoubtable that China is rising. But what God is saying is that China has risen. This prophecy is talking not about China's rising because whenever a competitor sees another worthy competitor rising, they will always obviously try to portray it in the media as if, well, you know, they've still got a little ways to go. Well, you know, they're coming up and we'll look at them in a few years. God is saying, whether you look at them in a few years or now, the future says that China will be sitting at the top. The Lord actually has said, to me today, just before I made this prophecy that tell them that China will be the global hegemon. A hegemon is basically a political entity that sits at the top. The one that has everyone's ear, the one that actually sets the pace, the one that actually sets the tone, the one that if they disapprove of something, then even if they just say, <clears throat> without speaking, everyone else will begin to adjust the balance of power and find their, find their place in such a way as to not offend that power. With China, it will be simply because of size and also outpacing in growth and outpacing in technology and outpacing in trade. These are all things that were covered in I think it was a 2020 prophecy that is called Send for Their Flesh where the Lord described the various aspects of how China will simply shoot up to the top. And if there's time, I might look at aspects of that prophecy for greater understanding. But the Lord says that China will be rewarded for all her hard work. So this is hard work, whether it's hard work spying, whether it's hard work copying, reverse engineering, innovating on her own rights, hard work because she has a larger labor force, whatever it is, the Lord says that hard work has a reward. Hard work does pay off. Hard work will pay off even if US media is constantly painting another nation to be a threat, as if other nations don't have the right to grow. This is the thing here. The mindset is set by the media. So another nation's growth is automatically a threat. But when the United States is growing, then obviously it's growth, it's innovation, we're doing great. But when er anyone else does the identical things that we do here, all of a sudden it's domineering, it's being pushy, it's being a threat and things like that. God says that the basic rules is that hard work gets a reward and the hard work will be rewarded by ascendancy. That is powering up to the top prominence that is being thrust forward to the top. So if you do an objective study of international news nowadays, anti-American rhetoric is growing. Exactly as I said in 2021, there is a prophecy that is entitled pushback and provocation and something else. And I will link it in the description box because the comments are not open. So I will link it in the description box for you to go and see and listen. It's just a 20 minute brief prophecy, but it's pretty telling. And in that prophecy, the Lord says that the nations were going to find their voice. 
And when they found their voice, the sound that we will hear across the world is the sound of America is bad. America did this. America thinks that she can push people around. America this and America that. And God says that these things would happen on state media. That means that you will hear presidents, leaders, influencers in the political sphere in various countries speaking against America with a harsh and angry tone. And that hasn't even picked up yet the way it's going to in the future. So prominence means being pushed to the front, coming to the forefront. Ascendancy means rising from the bottom, going to the top and glory. Glory relates to excellence, excelling in different areas. So God says that China will be the foremost nation among the nations, a global hegemon, meaning that she will literally overshadow and influence and have a hand touching everything. And she will be a world leader influencing everybody else in terms of style, in terms of culture and compelling political rhetoric. So style, I guess it relates to what people might want to be wearing right now. The whole world is very West centric, but who knows? Kimonos might come in, Mandarin collars might be all the rage in just a few years. And people might be very intrigued with Asia in terms of travel, in terms of food, in terms of things like that. Style just basically relates to the general trend that people follow. And it's been Western for a very long time, but God is saying that style and culture will take a sharp pivot towards China. So you might find that people with available dollars who want to go on a holiday will not come here, but will go to Asia, will go to China specifically. Compelling political rhetoric means, he says that compelling political rhetoric will come from China, not America. This literally means if you're looking at summits, you're looking at the G7, you're looking at the G20, you're looking at the United Nations, you're looking at any international space where we're listening to the voices of nations. God says that the person whose speech will be seasoned with salt, the person whose speech will sound, will be tasty in the mouths of other countries will be China, not America. China will lead in technology and no one will be able to compete with her when it comes to the rate of production, meaning she will be able to make any good faster than others because she can she has an endless population, so she will have many more people working on goods. China's able to have day and night shifts. The population avails itself to work around the clock. China is able to have 24 hour production. And that is why many United States brands, many US companies have relocated there because they're able to increase their production rates simply because somebody is always on duty in China. In terms of prices, in terms of market share, business savvy, God says that America is going to be outpaced and left behind. Chinese diplomats are going to be the person, the point of contact that other nations want. They're going to want to get the Chinese ambassador's number in their phone, not the US ambassador's number. These ambassadors are going to be greatly celebrated and coveted as personal friends and dinner guests. At the same time, God says, people will start to forget America and she will become very irrelevant as we enter the end times. And this is part of the punishment that I've been speaking basically since I started making these videos and since I started writing down the Lord's prophetic messages and publishing them for public use. God says that one of the punishments that will go to the heart of America is that America has always had the love of the nations. All the nations look at America and they idolize her. All the nations look at America and they emulate her, meaning that they copy her. Young people want to be like the average American teenager, the average American youth. But if you are honest, as I said, and you start to look at videos that are going up online and you just casually browse the comment section, you will find that young people of today are experiencing some kind of awakening. They are very mocking and they are very disparaging in their comments and they are not interested in the American way of life. They are not that interested in America's online e exports. They're finding themselves, they're becoming more interested in their own nations and there's this rebuff 
To rebuff things means to reject it and push it away and not just push it away politely to just decline and say, no, thank you, but to push it away in such a way that you want it known that I scorn this and I reject this. It's a sharp no. And so this is starting to happen across all ages. And God says that this is Americans, America's punishment to fade from prominence and to sit there and watch glory and beauty be attributed to her traditional so-called enemies, Russia and China. America, your time is over. Now you will be ignored, bested, outperformed, and beaten by your enemies who have worked harder and burned the midnight oil more consistently than you. Prepare for your imminent defeat. Prepare to go into the darkness. Prepare to be sidelined, overlooked, to lose international competitions and your once sharp competitive edge. You will flounder and you will make great mistakes in the international arena. You will fail to read the writing on the wall. Mene, mene. So here again, the Lord is highlighting the benefit and the rewards of hard work. This used to be America's calling card, hard work. America used to take care of all her own production. She used to take care of all her own manufacture. She used to take care of all her own everything. But in the years that have, that have passed, in the intervening years since America built up this hard worker, hard worker, blue collar, we'll get it done, we'll roll up our sleeves and we'll get it done, reputation, a lot has changed. A lot of stuff comes over the borders and Walmart is proof that America's production is production and manufacture is nowhere where it used to be. America is now much more invested in international trade than she was 50 years ago. And it's dangerous for a nation this big to be depending on other nations to bring food in. The next time you look um, at your grocery list and you buy stuff, look at the stickers on them. You will see a lot of the food coming from South America. You will see even that beef is coming all the way from Australia and New Zealand, different cuts of beef and things like that. And so America's not producing enough internally for the rather large population of over 335 million people that she has. And this means that if anything should go long, go wrong, sorry, if anything should go wrong, in the chain link fence of the American existence, that blow will be instantly felt from the bottom upward. Money may cushion the blow at the top, but definitely at the bottom and even at the middle, it will be felt. And here God is saying that the time of America is now done, that this nation is in her sunset. So the words of God, they surpass how people feel about the words of God. So feelings are not necessary to process prophecy. Feelings are actually not the standard or the benchmark for how we process the Lord's word. What we need is spiritual understanding. We need to always be able to grasp prof prophecy from where is God coming from and why does God say these things? And there's no need to rehash where God is coming from. God is coming from a stance of judgment for a nation that has sinned greatly, consistently, and too much to be forgiven. And so he says that now America will be ignored and outperformed. That means that he is giving kudos to other nations who have managed to pull themselves up from whatever st state they used to be in historically. He says that they've worked harder and they've burned the midnight oil more consistently than the United States. And this is because America has, in at least the last two or three decades, been suffering from Victor's pride. Victor, not a person, but Victor as in the one who wins. When you win enough races, traditionally, you always end up in the state of empire. And we, always, and we all know that historically, empires must come to an end. They have a certain shelf life, but inevitably, because of too much victory, because of too much comfort, because of too much pride, and especially when they have a strong military and they have expanded their reach globally, 
Empires always stop being hungry. They lose their go-getter attitude and they become extremely complacent and they begin to rest on their laurels. And because of that, it is very easy for another nation that may not have those benefits of being the victor to work very hard, looking over to see how that success was won. And because they keep a, um, they keep a consistent pace, eventually you will find that the little turtle that was at the back while the rabbit was in front and the rabbit stopped and took a break, the little turtle will keep crawling and cross the finish line. And this is what the Lord is saying. And he says that America must pre prepare to be defeated and to also go into darkness. So now we're definitely not talking in the area of style. We're not talking culture and we're not talking economics. We are talking about straight out military warfare. I shared it would be a few months ago. It was definitely this year in 2023, even though I saw that thing in 2021. I shared that China has or will have in the future of warfare a gun that I have never seen before. This gun, people were thinking, oh no, maybe it's a flamethrower. It is not a flamethrower. We've been seeing flamethrowers since the old action movies. This gun is some kind of gun that has either rays or plasma. It shoots out a beam, something like that, but it's also fire. This thing comes out and I said that when it hits the traditional flamethrower or flamethrower gun, you shoot the thing and then it sets something on fire. This gun melts things. This gun causes, as the Lord explained it to me in, in a way that I could understand, he says that it will excite the atoms of whatever matter it touches. So this particular gun, China will have this gun and when that thing hits flesh, I saw it demonstrated. So they shot a person with it and this entire part became like candle wax. So it didn't catch on fire. It literally became like candle wax and it slumped. It slumped off. It was destroyed. It lost the formulation of bone and flesh. It was no longer firm. It literally became like wet and runny candle wax and it went off. I also saw that if you took this gun, people wore it almost like keyboardists in a band in a band so it, it was worn across the body and then you do something you can move it like this as like a sword i saw the gun demonstrated first in shooting out its ray it hit a person and this entire side of the person just became like wax and it was destroyed and then i saw that the gun can be used in a motion like this in a sweeping motion also like a sword and when it was like that this entire part of the person separated from this part almost as if they had been cut by a very sharp katana a very sharp uh samurai sword and this whole part just slid off the person so that is that is the capability of that gun and when i saw that thing it was a vision i was awake i was awake the lord was talking to me and he told me back then to never speak of this weapon he only told me recently this year and i mentioned it in, in one video but i'm not sure what video that is and so when i saw that thing my heart paled my heart froze i said what kind of gun is this this gun is not even the normal gun that has you know the little trigger hole the gun is very blocky it's very blocky it is, it is not a normal gun that has a bit that sticks out like this with a trigger part. It's not like that. The whole gun is, is very big. It does have a no nozzle, but it's very big and solid and it's long and you wear it across your body with a strap, something like that. You wear it like that and it doesn't have bullets. It has a ray in it. And when it is shot, it can melt, melt flesh, just turn it the face will slump the whole part where it hits will just hew off like that and you can also do this and it will cut off the top part from the bottom part so that is just one of the weapons the lord has said that in the end times end times wars this is final final future wars will be f fought with weapons that we have never seen before another thing the lord said and i said it in 2021 is that he said that China has developed amazing technological marvels in the area of weaponry and that when warfare is being fought, 
Russia will be in charge of strategy. So Russia will make the plans how to creep up on the United States, how to creep up on France, how to creep up on definitely Belgium, he said, how to creep up on many of the European nations. Please hear this. Russia is going to make the plans how to do it. Who's going to be an ally and who's going to be jumped on in the middle of the night and who will be shown mercy and who will not. But China will be in charge of logistics. And one of the things that the Lord said is that when the weapons of the future are being the prototypes, I guess, prototypes means the early, the early version, as well as the final thing. He says that there will be weapons shows, weapons conferences, and none of the Western nations, this is France, and this is everybody over there in the EU, this is Australia, I guess, and New Zealand, everybody who's considered a Western nation, Canada, United States, no Western nation will be invited to these gun shows, invited to these private reveals of these very deadly things that China will create. God says that the West will not even have a whisper of the aeronautics, the types of ships, I guess, the naval, the naval things, the types of, they will develop their weapons of warfare, simply put, without any Western nation or Western ally to the United States being aware of it. So this completely then blows the defenses of Americans out of the water. They're watching the war between Russia and Ukraine now and saying, oh, their guns are outdated and this is outdated. And yet the Lord has been talking since 2021 of the fact that Russia has ships that use anti-gravity. The thing doesn't need a, a runway. The planes that they have, it doesn't need a runway. It's sitting on the ground and then it just goes up and it just hovers like that. And it doesn't fly anywhere. It doesn't most planes need momentum they need to run and get up in the air and then they need to keep going and the only way for them to stop is to come down this thing literally goes up and it will hang there and this is a plane and the lord says that they're kept in the russian mountains russia keeps this kind of technology in the mountains so this is how dangerous it is to rely on your eyes and the limitations of what you know and the terrible lies of western media to be informed as to what is happening in the military world the Lord says, look beyond celestial and I being obedient, look beyond. And what I have seen is that weapons conferences will take place. If they're not already taking place, they will never show up on YouTube. They will never show up on Canal France. They will never show up on CNN, MS MSNBC, Fox, or any of the BCs. They will take place in cached areas of codependencies between brand new alliances that are growing in the shadows and America is power drunk and unobservant and too cocky and very prideful and all those four equal her being in the dark about what is being planned against her. Just a moment, please. So China will be showcasing these things. Russia will be there and all the anti Western nations will be there. Maybe the entire Emirates and Saudi Arabia and all of them will get together the same way they've gotten together and they have alternate money. Most people are only aware of BRICS now, but BRICS is very old. It has been growing in the shadows and as true to formula, when it was first premiered, I remember reading about BRICS in 2015 in the Wall Street Journal. It was nothing but mockery at that time. And now this thing is a reality. And look at all the other nations clamoring to join. Why is this? Because they're sick of the Western standard. They're sick of the World Bank and they're sick of the IMF. They're sick of uneven ways of measuring and valuing their resources, measuring and valuing their money. Now they're able to go and they're able to join and they're able to trade in their local currency. And basically this is the fulfillment of what I said many years ago. I said that the speech of Vladimir Putin basically means the kinds of suggestions that he will make and the things that he will say will cause the other nations to be happy. Go and watch the prophecy ascendancy, read it on the master's voice prophecy blog. It's very old. It's from November, 2020. I said that Putin will say things that will make the other nations happy because he will propose solutions that are inclusive 
America's foreign policy is very exclusive. It looks inclusive, but it's just including America and her few friends. It leaves everybody else out. It takes, it takes place in secret, most of it. And then Washington comes out and says, we will do this and we will do this and we will do this. And whoever doesn't fall in line, you won't get alo alone. If you won't be LGBTJQST friendly, then we will sanction you and we will ban you. And that old behavior, basically, which is the use of a rod, which is the use of power, beating other countries on the head, basically playing international whack-a-mole, the tide has changed. The tide has turned against this country. Other people are tired of getting beat on the head. They're complaining. They're saying, well, we were not going to pay attention. And they can see an alternative. Vladimir Putin is providing that alternative. And I didn't get this from the news because it's comfortably written on my blog since years ago that this man will speak speech that will have everyone clapping him, that will have everyone applauding him, that will have everyone saluting him and inviting him over. Putin is now invited to everything and now America is just home. And the representative that America has to send overseas either cannot carry herself in a way that commands respect, the other party cannot remember why he flew over there in the first place. And this is where it is now. Remember the prophetic words. What did the Lord say? When Biden stumbles, America stumbles. When Biden falls, the confidence of the American people fall with it. These things are all in print and now they're on the TV. That's another prophetic fulfillment. The Lord says that as we go in the future, the TV will become the star of the home. So American time is over and God says now the nation is going to be overlooked, sidelined and preparing for imminent defeat and to go into darkness. This is definitely talking about military conquest, military conquest, not being able to keep her feet in war. Just a few months ago, I brought a prophecy that is called war, civil war and the fall of America, I think it is. I'll put it in the description box. And what it was talking about is that America is not only going to face a domestic war at home, but America is going to be soundly beaten, not just beaten, but soundly beaten by Russia and China. And the vision that God gave me was of three hippos fighting out there in a big lake. And when they started out, it was two hippos against one, but as the fight got more and more and more desperate, that lake that was initially calm, it got stirred up, the water got muddy, but then they churned it up with their feet until it turned to mud. And two of the hippos beat up on the smallest hippo until they crushed him down into the mud, until he sank into the mud and he did not rise again. But as that fight was taking place, I saw the mud flinging everywhere. And even that part of the vision, the Lord explained it. And he said, Celestial, do you see that mud flying everywhere? That shows you that the dirt from this conflict is going to affect every single nation. There is no part of the world that is not going to be affected when Russia and China come here and start bombing and nuking America in the middle of the night. And she has 1000 people that are dependent on her for various things. And she has another thousand people that she is protecting. Nations that are protected from by America. Nations that you know your enemies only are not touching you because the United States is the very loud bullhorn that tells other people, stay away. These are our friends. These are our allies. Well, once America falls, there is going to be a power vacuum. And you can read all about that power vacuum in the prophecy that is called undone. I think that prophecy is from 2021 as well. In the prophecy undone, God says that everything America has ever accomplished, everything America has ever achieved, it is going to be wound back like an invisible clock. All her foreign policy, all the treaties that America has brokered, all the so-called peace that she has done here, all the deals, all the everything, the Lord says it's going to be sucked up as if this nation never existed and a brand new balance of power is going to come. And one of the sad outcomes of that is that everybody dependent on the United States, whether it's for food aid, whether it's for money aid, whether it's for educational purposes, whatever it may be, those countries are going to feel 
the loss very keenly. And likewise, countries that are protected by the United States, when your protector is no longer there, when your protector has been beaten into the darkness, as God says, prepare to go into darkness, those countries are going to be exposed. And the obvious one that everyone is looking at hearing this is the nation of Israel. So God says that America will also flounder and she will be making great mistakes in the international arena. And this prophecy is over two and a half years old. And so you do not need me to explain that that is happening already. Mene, mene, says the Lord. Mene means you have been weighed. Tackle, you have been, want, you have been found wanting. Ufarsin, your kingdom has been torn from your grasp and given to competitors who are hungrier and better than you. This is the word of the sovereign Lord who dictates the rise and the fall of nations, who rules in the affairs of men. The second dream that I had is that the Zika virus came back. Now, I think this virus is from many years ago, but the way I saw Zika virus come back was that it was way worse. It was extremely virulent and it was everywhere. I saw it going all around the world. This disease that came in mostly Brazil and the South American nations the first time it came, it refused to be confined this time. I saw it rushing around the world and causing so much devastation and infant death. And my vision was filled with the misshapen heads of so many countless babies. I was looking at the babies and they were so cute and they were so perfect from their toes up. So the field of vision was, I was looking at them for the toes up, but when it got to the head area, it was devastating because the, the skulls of the babies looked like it had been crushed or it had been pressed or flattened just as it was exiting the, the womb. So the children were not dead, but they were painfully maimed in the crown and the head area. And I saw this disease depicted like male priority express mail or fast mail like DHL or FedEx. It was rushing around the world and it refused to be confined. And I saw people crying out in anguish because there was terrible damage happening to children at such a high rate. And then the dream ended. And this is what a voice said to me. Zika will be back with a bang and so will Ebola. Both these diseases are viral in nature and they will beat a wide path for themselves through the soft and vulnerable flesh of humanity. People will die in record numbers and it will be recorded in the annals of heaven. An annal simply means the records or the books. That the pale horse who kills with death is riding and hell is following closely after him to take up the souls of all who die in their sin without Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Behold, a pale horse, the end of the world approaches. And so this Zika virus, this is the first time that the Lord had ever spoken about it to me in February, 2021. But Ebola, I have written down all the incidences here when the Lord brought a word about Ebola, the first time the prophecy is called, Behold a Pale Horse, and that was on the 10th of July, 2019. It came again in June 18, 2021, and it came again in December, 2021, and it came again on June the 9th, 2022. So the prophecies are, Behold a Pale Horse, and then disease and decay in America, and then Satan as an angel of light, and then behold a pale horse, part two. And in all of these, the Lord was basically saying that ancient diseases are coming back, and I will read a little bit about those again from these past covered prophecies at the end of this video. But here God says that the Zika virus will come back and it will, it will not be confined to South America. So we're going to see this disease popping up everywhere else. And I saw it damaging little ones at a very high rate. The third dream that I saw is that people were covered with sores and lesions in the end times. Healthcare will not at all be prepared or able to cope with the things that I'm talking about here. Current healthcare as it exists, it is becoming extremely negligent. It is becoming very hard to get good doctors when you need them. They're not receiving the same in-depth training that they used to in the old days. 
Also, there's not much continuity with doctors now. In the old days, you would get a doctor and that person would look after you. They would look after the children that you have. And if the doctor lived long enough and was still viable to practice, he could also look after the grandchildren in the same family. But that is not happening. You can barely keep the same primary care provider from year to year because the doctors are disillusioned or the doctors are chasing money or they're hopping around hospital to hospital trying to get a better deal. They're overwhelmed with perhaps not enough of the materials and resources that they need in healthcare. And so some of them are simply moving on to greener pastures private practice, which is a lot more expensive. And so it's very hard to even have doc doctoral continuity at all. Worst of all, the kind of diseases that are coming in the end times are both novel, meaning that they are brand new, and they are also extremely ancient, meaning that they are coming back out of the past beyond a hundred years where medical science has not been confronted with this kind of illness, this kind of pace of virulence, meaning how fast it will jump from person to person, this type of spread, pandemic spread across nations, across entire cities. And so the healthcare system will not at all be prepared to deal with things that it's never seen before, whether they are brand new things or deal with things it's never seen before, whether they are ancient things like the bubonic plague or deal with them, deal with things that are extremely fast moving, extremely contagious, like dengue fever, like Marburg, Marburg and like Ebola. And so God says that a few of the doctors will indeed try to rise to the challenge of this type of healthcare onslaught. And they will try to invent fixes and cures for what they see but it will not be enough. It will not be anywhere near enough. Remember, I've spoken in previous prophecies of how um, many of the people who will lose their lives in the things that are coming are frontline workers. We call them here in America. This just means the doctors, the nurses, also the cleaners, the people who are dealing with the extreme waste that comes from the human body when the human body is not at its best, when the human body is sick. And so God says there will be a large loss of life in the healthcare sector, which of course will compound the problem. It will make things worse when a lot of doctors and nurses catch what their patients bring them because the patients themselves will not know what they have. This won't be your ordinary cold, your ordinary flu. The Lord has spoken about things such as the fever. Hasn't highlighted what type of fever this is, but please remember that in 2020, I spoke of seeing a fever that was cooking people at 106, 108 degrees Fahrenheit, and people were cooked by that fever until they became eggplant purple. When they died, they were not normal skin shades. Black people were looking pale and ashy, and white people were looking eggplant shade and their skin was as wrinkled as croissants. A person could die and look 90 years old and maybe they were just 30 years old because this fever cooked people, cooked their organs, cooked everything from the inside and made them look so shriveled. And it was so contagious that the Lord showed me someone had passed away and the people came in to get them in hazmat suits. This is the vision I saw. So somebody had died of this fever and was on the gurney and then the disposal team came to get them all in hazmat suits. But as they were zipping the person in, they got the zipper caught and a little bit of hair was kind of cut off and fell to the floor. And the Lord was putting my eye on that hair and just showing me if anyone touches that hair, just that hair that fell to the ground, that thing is so contagious that they will come down with this same fever. So it was some kind of transmissible contact fever, something like that. And so people will die in record numbers from diseases that nobody has ever seen before. And sores and lesions will be one of the most common indicators that a human being has been greatly compromised health-wise. And that person is now deteriorating to the point where the outward visible meat of their body will rot and erupt in pockets of weak flesh. A pocket of weak flesh is literally a sore or a lesion. And I have spoken of some of the things that I've seen. I said that I saw hard white bumps that came all over a person's torso, 
hard white large boil shape bumps and i was talking about this in 2021 and i said that the doctors would look at this thing and they did not know what it was and it was extremely painful to the touch so if they were even trying to examine a person look at their back and everything the doctors couldn't really make contact to probe this thing because the person's body was so sensitive another thing that i said that i saw was postules different types of postules one type of postule was just it was lesions. I said that it would cover a person's face and maybe you could cover it on the body, but on the face, it was really hard to hide those things. But another one was a, basically a weeping sore, this type of pustule. You, you touch it and it had little blisters. It formed little blisters on the skin. And then if you, if you even try to, to scratch it or rub it, the, the blisters broke and they had liquid in them. And that liquid was what was infectious. And so it, as people were trying to get relief, it would spread. But the other type of pustule, people were greatly trying to cover it with makeup, male and female. Why? Because God was saying that it's economic hard times and these people don't want to lose their job. But these two things were highly contagious and they were outward indicators of deadly disease. And I said that once, family or not, friend or not, spouse or not, what I saw was if you broke up, broke out in that stuff, people put you out of the house. People didn't want you around. You had to go. I said very clearly that I saw the way that people treated those people in society was exactly the way they treated Tom Hanks in the movie Philadelphia. The way that people were just like, what? No, you can't be here. You can't stay here. And I also said the prophecy is called disease and decay in America. And this is June 18, 2021. And you cannot get that prophecy here on YouTube anymore. It had to be removed for obvious reasons. So in that prophecy, the government was all over the outbreaks of these things. They will be called, they were called in those days, pandemic sicknesses. So I do not have a name for any of these various diseases that I'm listing. They were called pandemic sicknesses. And I said all the way back then that the government was all over this thing and that the government had stringent isolation policies. I'm sure it's clicking for listeners of 2023, given what we just saw a few weeks ago happening with Governor Hochul here in New York City for those Q camps, Quarren, you know the rest camps. So um, that is what I saw. These things that are being defeated now by legal challenges and running to the Supreme Court, prophecy is here to let you know how it ends up. And how it ends up is they will be successfully set up. That means all legal challenges will in the future, in the United States at least, be completely defeated. These camps will be set up. And the government had a strict isolationist policy. They were not against isolating an entire district something that Americans were watching happening in 2019 and 2020 in Wuhan when this was happening, when China was just roping off an entire region or an entire city, should I say, an entire town and saying no one can enter and no one can leave. Well, America can and will do that. The government took an extremely stringent um, isolationist policy and got people and took them to those places. And so you can see the incentive of people to hide that they were sick, to hide that they had caught something, to lie about it, to even go on the run. And as the Lord showed me in that prophecy, for it was a prophetic dream that was extremely hectic to see, people went on the run. And when people who are sick go on the run, what are they going to do? They are going to knowingly or unknowingly spread the disease that they have. And so, I saw in this dream here, February 2021, I saw that all these undetected diseases, these new diseases, unknown viruses were mostly of man-made origin. What I saw in the dream was disembodied hands working in the lab, working to make these diseases and then releasing them into the general population. And as a result, people died in record numbers because of this type of germ warfare, bioweapons, biological warfare. People died in record numbers because of wicked people having access to this type of disease and releasing it in the population. I saw mankind falling like straw 
before an onslaught of new diseases. And it was very painful to see people die like that. So two more dreams that you can look at to find out more about man-made diseases that God calls man's inhumanity to man, man's own wickedness towards his fellow man. Two prophecies are the new man. That is one. That prophecy is from December, 2020, I think. And the other one is dream of a deadly disease. These are man-made and weaponized diseases. The future holds a lot of death, but much of it will not be natural. Wicked people will devise many different ways to reduce the population of the earth. And I'm letting you know now that the Lord says that they will be successful in the evil plans. So um, one of the things that I shared a few years back is that I was shown, as I'm describing here in this dream, I saw it again, hands without the doctor's faces or without the lab technician's faces, hands working on things so deadly that in several instances, in a lot of cases, scientists were trying to weaponize known diseases. So if there is something natural, perhaps like malaria, they were trying to make super uber weaponized malaria. But the problem was, is when you're trying to make something that is outside the range of what exists, you don't actually have a reference point for how bad or how dangerous it will be. And a lot of the diseases that scientists were making, being ordered to or willingly weaponizing, it killed them instead. I said, I saw instances where things broke out in the lab and the scientists, the researchers themselves caught what they had made and they died. But I, other saw in, I also saw other instances where they made these things successfully and then the entire team was killed by the people who ordered them. So obviously this is higher up, perhaps moneyed elite or perhaps government or perhaps government working with moneyed elite in one diabolical alliance, but whatever it was, people worked on things successfully. And then the entire food chain who knew about how the disease was created was wiped out. And here in the master's voice prophecy blog, you have already heard the Lord reveal that Ebola is one such man-made disease that it was indeed created in Western centers to wipe out the African population, to greatly reduce the African population. And that is why all the prophecies of Ebola I have, behold a pale horse part one, behold a pale horse part two. The Lord says that further on, oh, also Satan as an angel of light. Those three prophecies mention Ebola. And in all three prophecies, the Lord says, that Ebola will sit on a plane, meaning that there will be a ground zero person coming from those places where they are intended to internalize the disease and die from it. The Lord says that that disease will go everywhere and it will greatly destroy in the West. That yes, it will break out. I think the places he mentioned was West and Central Africa. He says that there will be outbreaks coming in West Africa and Central Africa. And he said that though there will be a death toll there, the time will come when Ebola will sit on a plane, meaning someone who does not look like they're carrying it, but they will be carrying it. And he says, it will go to Paris, it will go to London, and it will definitely come here to the United States. And this disease, he says, will take its greatest toll in Western nations as their punishment and judgment for colluding to cause harm to Africans and to kill them off and depopulate them using bioweapons. So there is that. Um, God calls all demonic plans to kill people with deadly lab-created pathogens, man's inhumanity to man. The last part of this prophecy is the fourth dream that I had. I saw gossip flourishing around the world. You might wonder why this is relevant, but if you just give me time, I will be able to bring out why the kinds of dreams that I have, God is always saying something. It doesn't matter what you dream, as long as your spirit witnesses that this was from the Lord, whether you understand your dream or not, God always has a point in what he was saying. And that was the sole point of this last dream I had on February the 15th, 2021. It was to highlight the dangers of gossip. I saw that everywhere, this was globally and for any small reason. I saw people picking up the phone and talking 
The entire point of the dream was watching human beings connecting with one another to share evil information, malicious information, slanderous information, untrue information, and basically watching the process of how it blows up, snowballs, and becomes so dangerous to the group. People talked about everything. They told lies and they told slander to such an incredible level that it caused me pain in my soul as I was watching it. So people were telling such outright, blatant, dangerous and harmful lies in this dream, slandering others, bearing so much fault witness, false witness that it pained my soul in the dream. First, I saw a mouth, a male or female mouth. I couldn't tell next to those old fashioned telephones, the kind where you have to dial, I think with a curve, the dial each digit console. And they called someone and they started talking about something. And on the other end, the person was listening very patiently, absorbing every word and nodding in agreement. Then after the original caller hung up, the listener picked up their phone. They dialed someone else and they repeated everything they just heard. But this information coming from the second party was distorted and multiplied times 10. And by this process, I saw very vicious words spreading like fire around the world and it caused major damage. That is what I saw. So in one of these prophecies, um, I think it's called the many words of God part one. What I saw was how offense will grow. I saw that offense became a massive entity in its own right. People became so sensitive in the end times and that prophecy, we don't need to worry about it being fulfilled because it's happening right now. You say anything to someone, it could get you shot, it could get you stabbed, it could get you pushed on the train, on the train railroad tracks. And that is because people are at a massively heightened level of aggression, a massively heightened level of pride, a massively heightened level of sensitivity. And so words, God says, common words that you speak will sound like Greek and French to the person who's listening to you. And that definitely is an experience that I have here every single day every single video. I will say something so clearly. I will explain it for five minutes and then the person will come and say, so are you saying once you're saying, so are you saying you are displaying that you heard nothing that was said and you are about to set a new question that the speaker did not say, because once you listen to a speaker and understand what is said, there is no need to say, so are you saying, because the next few words that are coming out literally and usually have nothing to do with the original premise that has been put forward clearly towards you. And so gossip is going to flourish. And if you don't understand the relevance of this gossip, this thing is going to be the cause of much death when we enter the beast system because the beast system is going to be a system almost like an iron claw. There's an iron claw that they have at the fair. There's an iron claw that they have at the festival. It's, it's, it's just an arm. It's a mechanized arm. And all that arm knows how to do is open and shut open and shut. If it's working, it opens and shut shuts very quickly. And at the fair, you're going to put your money in and then you're going to try and organize or drive that claw around to pick up a teddy bear or to pick up another stuffed animal. And if you get it after three tries, it holds onto your prize and it brings your prize out and drops it in a tray. And then you pick up what you won in the future. That iron claw is going to be picking up human beings and taking them to the office of citizens affairs for whispered lies on the phone. All the women who call the police now and say, I think I see a man walking his dog, but he looks strange to me. Based on that subjective opinion, the police come out and then usually harass an innocent person for 35 minutes because once the police actually drive out to a false report, they become vested in ego and embarrassment because usually cell phones come out and people begin to tell them, why are you harassing that man? Why are you violating his rights? And now the police are embarrassed and to prove that they have a cause, they will then usually try to heckle an innocent person until they can find a reason to take them in to save face. 
So this process right now in a free and a fair and a generally still open society, all it causes is inconvenience and embarrassment and gives rise to social media videos. But in the future, when social media will not be the thing that it is now, we don't even know if it will still exist. In the future, phone calls with lies and gossip and slander will cause that iron claw to come down into the population and to grip one person, to grip an entire family, to grip perhaps a company owner, or to grip anyone in the society and take them off to jail, perhaps for execution, perhaps for indefinite detention. I have already described here for many years now that the world where you get to make your one phone call will no longer exist. The world where you have a right to legal representation. You have the right to have your rights read to you when you're arrested. Nobody is going to hear a Miranda in the future. They're literally going to come to the door and knock on the door and read out a list of charges to you that you may or may not be guilty of. You are guilty of sedition. You are guilty of treason. You are guilty of writing blogs that incite people to believe in Jesus Christ and to repent of their sin. You are guilty of having one eyebrow that is too full and another that is waxed too thin. And off they will take you indefinite detention, no access to representation, no rights to be arraigned before a judge, nothing. And I said that your family will be walking around and trying to show the little alternative news media, this is my daughter. They took her in 2026, it's been six years and we haven't seen her since. That is the America coming and the fuel that will pour on the fire of this growing volatile nation will be the tongues of people who have no self-control and who also have no shame and who also have absolutely no Christianity in them. And they are not above a lie. They're not above a lie to cause harm to others. They're not above a lie to make themselves seem more important. They're not above a lie for malice. And they're not above a lie because many will be tools in the hands of Satan, including many who claim the name of Jesus Christ. Now Christianity will be tested. Fidelity will be tested. And the tongues of people are going to cause death. I did not say harm, I'm saying death. We are in the days now where the tongue causes harm. We are going to the years. We are going to the biblical Revelation 13 season where the tongue will cause death. Where a lie, you will not be given a chance to disprove that lie. Where if people start up the gossip and the rumor mill against you, it could get your entire family picked up in the night in the communist, Marxist, socialist, North Korea world that America will become in the future. If you have not heard these things before, you're welcome to read the prophecy pro programs. You're wel welcome to watch the video. They will have nothing. And you're also welcome to read the prophecy on the blog and watch the video that is called communism in America. These are very sobering things. And a dream that the Lord showed me this morning before he led me now to make this prophecy finally makes sense. To those of you who have TikTok, I'm a relatively new user of that app. It is not my preference. I've only been there perhaps a few months. And I've noticed this strange feature that just started up whereby on TikTok you have the right to comment, but it's almost like Twitter in that the comments are very succinct. They're very, very short comments that you're allowed to leave. But now TikTok has become aware of the fact that people like talking, people like the sounds that they make, whether there's sense in it, research in it, truth in it, people like to speak. And Satan is greatly willing to facilitate whatever it is that people want to do because people are unaware of Bible verses such as in the multitude of words, there is sin. What does that Bible verse tell you? It means that if you talk a lot, talk a lot, talk a lot, it is almost guaranteed that you will say something that offends, something that is a lie, or something that is an outright transgression against what God wants from his people. Wise people know how to keep their own counsel. The Bible tells us, guard your heart even from she who lies in your bosom, which means that there are things that even your nearest and dearest don't need to know. 
One who lies in the bosom is one who basically you keep on your heart, you carry across your chest. The Bible is saying that guard your heart, meaning that there are some things, things that God could be working on you, things that God will teach you, things that God could be showing to you, things that God could be bringing to you just for you. The Lord is saying, protect that thing. He's not necessarily telling you that the one who lies in your bosom, such as your husband or your wife is evil, even though there are some that lay in the bosom and are vipers who strike at the heart to destroy. A man's enemies shall be those of his own household. Never forget that Bible verse. But God is saying that there are some things that are seedlings, they're small, they need to grow. But this generation, this last generation, the tongue, the tongue, they cannot control it. They cannot make it be still. And so it will cause harm to themselves. At the time they should not speak, they will speak. At the time they should speak, they will withhold. They will be still. Wrong timing. There are some things that need to grow. There's some things you need to get a better understanding of before you get on your camera and start talking about them. Things you don't understand. You rush off and make a video and it's full of error. And then what you do is you sow your error into thousands and thousands and thousands of people. You spread your lies abroad. You, you cripple their faith simply because what God gave you is a seed that did not mature, did not grow. And so this thing, if you want to know more about it, there's a prophecy called telling. I've never made it a video, but I think I will. It simply shows in the B system, people will become paid for snitches, malicious snitches. So they'll be snitching just because they hate you. They want to see you carried off by the B system police. And then others will be snitching because there will be money offered. America will be a paid incentive um, society. The prophecy is also called, if you see something, say something. Pause the video, write down the names of these prophecies and go and Google them. Go and look them up on the Master's Voice blog or look in the channel dashboard. Look at the videos, put it in the, put it exactly in the heading of YouTube and then just put Master's Voice prophecy blog and it will bring you directly to the video. The state will encourage people to talk about one another and Americans will talk about one another don't even have this mindset of, oh no, we're one people and we're going to be, no, they're going to find ingenious ways to divide the population and the population is going to utterly throw one another under the bus. I said that I saw in the future of America that people became extremely calm and extremely quiet because you literally didn't know if your best friend had switched over to the beat system and had become a paid snitch and you didn't know what she would be recording or memorizing or capturing on her phone to go and give information because there will be money involved. And in a hard life, people will want extra beast credits. And so I noticed on TikTok that they have a new feature and it is so odd. I thought to myself, why has the Lord given me this dream? It was just a short dream. All I saw was someone's cell phone and they were scrolling through TikTok and under a comment here and there, there is now the option to record a video so if you see a comment that you do not like, or if the creator is talking about something that you don't agree with and you want to say more than that tiny little comment, you can record a video response and then put it up. And I was looking at someone on TikTok and these video responses were popping up, popping up, popping up. And when I woke up this morning, I was utterly confused because I do not care about TikTok. It is merely a tool to get God's work done, to reach the younger demographic who do not want to come and watch the longer form videos and hear about what is coming to touch their young lives and change their young lives forever. And so the Lord sent me there simply to leave rabbit trails to see whether they will come to the larger platforms and watch the full videos and get ready for the future that is coming to young and old. And I was wondering what why would the Lord show me this? Because I will never use this feature. I will never feel the need to record a video response for any reason, for nothing. But now I understand looking at this very old prophecy that had fallen into the back mirror and yet it is still there on the blog is that the tongue is going to be the destruction of many. People are going to snare themselves by their words. I simply want you to think of a spear going through this object that James 3 talks about, how the tongue is a little thing that can set a forest on fire, that can set the entire 
body on fire, even unto hell. I saw that the desire to speak, speak, speak was growing until this platform, people were choosing to respond more and more and more through these little videos where they could really say what they wanted to say and just always understand America and the rest of the world that the government is a data whore. The government is watching. Those of you who use social platforms and you put you, you put your full email and you're putting everything about all your feelings. I have warned you for years, as long as I've had this platform, it is the minimum response that I can get away with. It is only if I see someone is truly in need, truly hurting, and the spirit moves me and tell me, tells me, give the information to this person that they need. Show them how to pray. Show them the right psalm. Other than that, it is no response because all that needs to be said is being said in videos already. And so if we are not careful, it is, it is the mouth actually that traps many people. It is the mouth that destroys the perfection of many people's faith. You are kind and you are loving and you are compassionate, but your mouth, it is either that you cannot keep information protected when you should, or you cannot season your speech, whatever it may be. It is this mouth that will fill the new world order jails of the future. And so that is the prophecy, the fairest of them all, talking about China, talking about disease, and talking about the snare that the tongue can be. I am Celestial, and this is the Master's Voice. I want to thank those of you who are supporting this ministry. You are greatly appreciated. As I've always said, I used to send individual thank yous, but now I have reached a place of growth where it is the best and the most I can do to keep up with the Father's pace in trying to make these videos and at some point updating the blog. There must be at least 50 videos that I have made in the last few months and the written prophecy is not yet up, but as time allows, I will go back and do that. But I thank you for your support. There is no compulsion. Please understand that you are appreciated and whether you support or not, the prayers that I am praying, I have been very clear about that, that I do pray for people, but I'm praying for our submission to the word of God. Imagine the word of God is coming forth now to our generation. And then the best that people can do is say, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Do you understand that it is not our feelings and it is definitely not human unbelief that will be able to roll over, roll off the boulder of these prophecies. If you are in North America and you have come across this resource, and you are ignoring it in favor of whoever else is lying to you out there, I have to tell you, be my guest. This is not a place where I will do this work from the spirit of God and then go over and above to try and convince you and beg you, please give it a chance. This is your own soul, your children's soul. I have made my decision. I cannot prevent you from making yours. And so I am praying for God's people who have an ear in their chest. I always talk about that. A hearing ear of the Holy Spirit inside them who know God's voice. My sheep hear my voice and they know me. A stranger, they will not follow many of the church because of their sensitive nature, because they want to be lied to. Many people reject this channel because they are afraid to face the truth. Many people are terrified because they cannot imagine a universe where the things I say are true. So they heap up the false prophets, heap up the false teachers, and then try to think that it will overthrow me to say, well, what about all these people? And I'm thinking, how many liars do you need to gather together? And what makes you think that the bunch of liars, the bunch of deceivers that you have gathered, even if you heap up 3 million of them, what makes you think that they can overturn one of the messages on the master's voice prophecy blog? They cannot. A multitude of liars does not cancel out the truth. At the end of the day, exactly as Jeremiah found, all the false prophets will fall away and we will inhabit the very universe that I take this time to describe for you in perfect detail so that when it comes, you can know who spoke to you, the Lord God Almighty. So thank you and God bless you. And until I see you again, goodbye.